Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. I'm working in some hot conditions. It's unseasonably hot right now <laughs> in the fall here in Minnesota while I'm recording this in the greenhouse and it's the weekend so I need to kind of sneak it down to get some quiet time so I can actually channel for you. So I'm in the greenhouse room and it's hot. You might hear the fan in the background, whatever. But I'm trying to battle with like the sun. So it's like reflecting off the metallic coverings and the awnings. So it's a little weird, I get it. But that's just the way it's gonna have to be right now. So yeah, let's channel. We're gonna channel today. So who are we gonna talk to? I think I want to talk with Louise Hay. We've heard from her before. She is the former owner of the Hay House Publishing Company. And she is someone who's got a lot of healing energy. She's been through a lot. She's a trailblazer and divine feminine for sure. And I want to talk with her and connect with her and ask her for some advice and guidance for us um, during these really tender times. There's really tender times. Um, I personally feel a huge energy shift as an empath into the fall. For me, I really love the sun <laughs> and the energy of the heat and the warmth. But where I live, there's seasonal changes that are pretty dramatic, yeah, pretty radical. <laughs> and it's getting harder and harder the last three years to really kind of be okay with that. So it's affecting my energy already. And I'm trying to be positive and interact with um, the season change and the shift of energy proactively. So I want to talk with Louise Hay. No, not about seasonal affective disorder, but about being an empath and understanding the energy flows. Like when there's a change, when you're dealing with the change, you got a change of season, you got a, a change of a job, or maybe, maybe not, maybe not outcome based. Let's do it this way. Let's ask Louise about change related to our personal power, the ways that we want to interact or engage with the circumstances or situations in our lives. Yes. Woo. All right. High five. You guys high five. All right. So yeah, I know there's so many different patterns going on here. Light going on here. Uh, just pretend we're at the thrift store having a channeling session. <laughs> Polka dots, you know, Disney. All right. Let's just talk. I don't know why all of a sudden my ears are like really itchy. I don't know if they got sunburned. I hope not. <laughs> but my ears are like itchy. I was walking outside with oh, the sunscreen on my ears. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, sunny place problems. Literally, I, my skin like feels itchy all of a sudden. I have no idea why. That's very strange. Okay, all right, all right. Focus, 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 focus. Okay. Let's talk about change, Louise. She says, oh, my pleasure. She has such a lovely, soft energy. That's why I need that today. Maybe do you need that too, a soft energy? Let's talk to a spirit guide that's soft, soothing. Nobody intense, Louise Hay, soothing, like a healer, teacher. Okay, feel her energy, do you feel that? Yeah, very kind of Archangel Hannah-like. Kind of got a s splash of spice like Archangel Ariel. Yeah, and gentle, but strong, powerful, leaderful, but kind and nurturing, loving, that kind of thing. Give us some advice about change when we want to lean into what life is offering us and really find our power in a change, in the change process. A lot of internal, she says, a lot of internal work is happening. She says, Bridget, this isn't just for you. There's a lot of internal work that is happening for many of you, she says. At a level that has been like something that I have not seen before very unique to the time that you are in bodies on a planet. Remember, your bodies, the masses that you are, are not as well suited for the vibrational changes that occur in the atmosphere with the planets, astrologically, and also quite metaphysically in other ways, like with the climate and the plan and the um, the, the weather and the elements and also the people. And so there is definitely this challenge that is happening because of 
a, it is not a break. She says that there's no break, there's no breakdown, there's not a problem. There's a series of problems that are being revealed and unearthed, but they're already always have been there. And if you're an empath, which you are, you have felt the problems before. And it has been something you've held inside and now it's, ex it's outside external. So guess what, you can then just bring it to the dump, okay? Bring the, the, the underlying problems that you've been aware of consciously or subconsciously or unknowingly in the community, in your relationships with other people that you've been harboring as your own, you guys, we can let go of that, she says. We can bring it to the dump, which basically means bring it to a spot in the earth that is allowed or created as this, it literally looks like a bowl for repurposing and composting. So dump it, dump it. She says, like an altar, of trash, energetic trash. Bring your energetic trash here to the earth and it's like an altar and it's like this bowl and we're gonna have a big bonfire and we're gonna burn all that and clear it away. And it's not toxic, it's just something that you've been holding and she says, and guess what? There will be freedom, not just for you, but for all. So this is maybe why I've been thinking about having a bonfire. I haven't had a fire in a couple of months, you guys, and I've been thinking about it. And so maybe this is why it's a good time to do that. There are great times, by the way, you guys, during the month, during the year, during the seasons to purge, to clear, and to go in deep within yourself. So on the new moons, go in deep, spend some time with yourself, connect to your desires, your wants, do a check-in. Where are you at right now? New things may have popped up for you. You may have been changing and not realizing how much you've changed. So now your tastes are different. Your food needs are different. Your, the things you, you like, the kind of music you listen to, the clothes you wear might be different and that's fine. That's what happens, okay? So that's new moon. Full moon is clearing, purging, detox, release, let go. Uh, at those times, you can use that for clarity and clearing and release. Um, also, the beginning of a month is a fresh start, a new start, optimism, and a momentum energy. The ending of a month is a release and clearing, release and clearing, uh, ability to let go of any baggage, not just during the month, but any time in your life and something that is a reoccurring theme that's been happening, maybe recently in a relationship or at work or in your own thoughts, in your own mind. Clear, 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 you can at the end of the month. It doesn't mean it's gonna be magically better and you're one and done for clearing. It's just like vacuuming the house, you guys are sweeping. The dirt comes back, just not quite as bad. Whereas if you never vacuumed or swept, it would be nasty. So use those natural times, okay, for that clearing. Um, you can also use astrological things like retrogrades and um, different signs in different places based upon your astrological chart if you're into that and then also um, um, season seasonally so right now I'm I'm feeling that a lot a great deal a great 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 deal okay so Louise continue please let me take a breath oh that's kind of interesting I literally heard the word money and then I heard the look at the sky Interesting, like money is falling from the sky. So it's not though, it's kind of just floating, almost like a kite. Like, look, this is a very strange clairvoyant image, but I'm gonna share with you exactly what I see because I think it's important to do that so you understand how you make the links for you because it's happening for you guys now anyway too. So I literally see a kite that looks like money, like bills, okay? And it's like floating in this beautiful picturesque blue sky. So there's a green kite, green money, and then this beautiful sky. So I don't, is there a, and it's weird because it's not even on a string, it's like a stick. It's like a stick, like a puppet show. Oh, being manipulated, being, it, there's a performance that's happening, not manipulation, she corrects me. She says, no, 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 that's not the word, Bridget, that's not the word. There's a performance that's going on right now. So what does money mean to you? What does it represent? We're not talking about actual money, this is a, not a literal meaning. That's psychic stuff, signs, metaphors, images, not literal most of the time, people. That's why intuition is not easy because it's hard to believe and make the connections to the metaphor, the signs, the symbols, what it means to you uniquely. That's why I say, what does the money mean to you? What does that symbolize or represent for you? So for many of us, the response would be something maybe along the lines of general, this is just general, would be security, safety, the opportunity to be independent, sovereign, and to make your own choices. Freedom. Money represents freedom. Okay? 
So, or value and worth, self-worth. So to me, I just clicked in on freedom and self-worth. Boom, boom, those two things. For, so for me, that's what comes forward. So for whatever you, comes forward for you, that's what you grab onto. You could write it down in your journal and then you could journal about it more later. Okay, so, okay, so the money is representative of, I'm gonna say freedom. Yeah, like sovereignty, like I'm getting that vibe. Self-worth, not quite as much. It's a part of it. It's behind the scenes for me, but the first thing is freedom. Freedom, so let's use that. All right, so freedom. And the clear blue sky, blue sky as she says, um, you're always free. You always are. Freedom comes through the expression of your choice. Freedom comes through the, the way that you walk through your day, whether you do a meditation or what book you read, what music you listen to which friendships you cultivate or focus on, the people in your life that you spend the most time with, that you care most deeply about. These are the things that you have freedom and are expressing your freedom by choosing to spend time in these ways. And she says, I understand, I know, I, I do understand. I can hear the structure and the formalization of the mind saying that, this is Louise Hay, She's saying that um, I can understand the structure of the work and I have to work and there are things I have to do and the tasks and the to-do list and the structure in order to pay the bills, et cetera, et cetera. I know that there are expectations of you, she says, that you have chosen based upon that job, that family situation, where you live, the career, et cetera. You have made choices that have led to this place that have created the, the job that also then affords you the opportunity for freedoms. So maybe going to the job at the certain time or having to do the certain tasks are not freedoms, but the opportunity to be at the job is a freedom and to choose a different job is a freedom. It might not be an ideal job, it might not be an ideal place to live, it might not be an ideal X, Y, or Z, but you have the freedom to choose those things. And she says, it's not a freedom instant manifestation, that's not what freedom is about, that is not what this is about, that is not the meaning of this or the intention, the intention is to understand that change is a natural, ever flowing, always occurring process, but you don't recognize it is happening so often until it shows up in the, the manifested world. But then to look back and recognize the series of choices that created this moment where you're at shouldn't make you feel bad or judgmental about yourself, but it should give you the insight to understand that you are then free to start another chain of change another chain of intentional manifested choices linked together to create a path or walkway to the next thing. So we take Bridget, for example. Okay. She likes warm weather. Okay. Ooh, good. <laughs> good choice. <laughs> likes warm weather. And she knows this, so there's an awareness and yet she chooses, she lives in Minnesota, she was born here, and throughout her experience and many times in her life, she could take a job someplace else, she could have went to college someplace else, she could have married someone from someplace else, and she has not. And the someplace else could be the warmer place. However, this was a recent realization in the last three years, she's changed, which is normal, she's acknowledging her body likes the warmth. Therefore, now that she's in awareness of it, it's happened for a while, it's not a passing thing, it's a present thing. She has the opportunity to start to actually think about what it might look like to live in a warmer climate. She has thought about that, people. I'm like, Florida, there's some things I'm not really fond of about Florida just at the moment, so I will be okay here. However, there are some things I could do. There are definitely some changes I could make that would get me closer to the energetic realization or manifestation of an actual move to Florida. And there's different ways of living in Florida. It doesn't have to be a move outcome, this is the end result. It could be a timeshare scenario where I'm there three months out of the year. It could be, there's lots of choices that result in being in the warmer climate, but the goal and the vibe is the warmer climate, right? That is really good. So there's little things along the way and then she literally is showing me like um, getting your TSA pre-check so that when you do travel, you can whip in and out of there. I'm like, okay, because I don't have it. I should have it. I travel enough to have it. I have in the past anyway. And then she's also like, you know, the passport is something you've been thinking about. 
that's an indicator of change. If you, I have to renew my passport. And that would help because then if I was in Florida, I could go on cruises or if I needed to go to other warmer places like the Bahamas or something, the Caribbean or something, I could use that. So that's interesting. So she's just showing me little steps that I could take, little changes I could start to make. And I mean, there's so many other things I could think of. I don't need to have a project plan or anything, but that, but she's making me aware of this. So, so it starts as a thought or an idea and it's consistent. It kind of keeps coming up. So pay attention to that when it keeps coming up and then recognize, ask yourself legitimately, is this something I'd actually want? Is this something I could see for myself and I can totally, when I close my eyes, I don't have to close my eyes, you guys. When I use my third eye, I can see myself on a condo, in a condo on the beach or near the beach where I just walk a little bit and I'm on the beach where I can see the beach, the ocean, would be really great. So I might as well think of it the best way I possibly can. And on the beach, that's what I see. But, and I say condo on purpose because I'm like, I don't want to take care of house stuff. So see, I'm already like, woohoo. <laughs> I happen to have a super Florida shirt on right now. <laughs> this is awesome. That is a great example. Thank you. Okay. So the changes that you make, the, your life looks the way it does now because of changes that have been occurring below the surface all the time. And if you start to feel restless, energetically, she's saying, the emotions are indeed a signal for you. They are not to be ignored. They're not there to cause problems or make waves like be a troublesome um, energy or distraction. The emotions are not meant to be a distraction. Oh my gosh, talk about this. Talk about this. Talk about related to change, especially. Emotions. I need to have a drink, just a minute. Water. This is Disney World. That's in Orlando, Florida, my friends. Oh yes, we are manifesting as we were thinking right here. No. I don't actually have a trip planned for 2021 anymore. I've been there twice this year already. <laughs> and so 2022, I got to plan some trips. So maybe I'll actually like see my ears are itchy now all of a sudden. Okay. Ugh, I need my hair cut too. Oh my God. I got to wait like two weeks. Okay. 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 Talk about emotions and our feelings and how they're not a distraction. This is interesting. I'm going to pull up a chair and listen to this one. <laughs> She's this. Oh, that's sweet. She just literally said, you're so cute, Bridget. And I'm like, um, okay, I'm a professional psychic. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a life coach, a great intuitive life coach. And you're telling me I'm cute. Okay. Hey, it's Louise Hay. Okay, so fine. We're fine. Okay. Emotional freedom is something that many of us strive for, although we don't realize it. And we do use emotions connected to our trauma. And because of that, there's a fear of emotion. And emotion is connected to your intuition. Emotion is connected to an alliance between your heart and your spirit, as you've talked about in other videos. And it's important for people to recognize that emotions are not meant as a distraction. They are not meant to create disruption in your life so that you um, feel punished or defeated or, or like you're doing something wrong. She said, emotions are not meant to be judgments. Oh, that. Somebody needs to type that in the comments because I need to remember that. Emotions are not meant to be judgments. Emotions are not meant to be judgments. They are connected to your freedom. Your freedom. The freedom to change. The freedom to change. The freedom to change. Emotions are not meant to be judgments. Mm -mm. They are not. Mm -mm. We use them as distractions. We've misunderstood fear emotional energy and a freedom of emotion uh, and expression externally as something that is not allowed or that we have to contain or tame and that is not the case this is why you're seeing explosive emotions for people this is why you're seeing so much what you would call hate and hate speech and poor treatment people have held energy in for so long anger and hurt and pain and it comes out in this ferocity that lights fires and destroys things and trashes people. And she's saying it's over, it's like this overindulged, overindulgence in 
hiding your emotions. Overindulgence and hiding emotions, that's interesting. Overindulgence is like this, almost like I'm behaving badly. And it's like the excessive, let's say it that way, the excessive use of hiding emotion for years and years and years and years, trying to fit in, trying to belong, trying to find value, self-worth from other people, seeing that you have your act all together. And the truth of the matter is nobody has their act together. People pretend some days are good days and you do. Other days are not so good and you don't. But guess what? It's all part of the whole. And she says, emotions are not meant to derail you or diminish you or judge you. Emotions are meant to free you from toxic energy that is holding you in the past. Toxic energy that is holding you in the past. Emotions are meant to free you from toxic energy that is holding you in the past. Your most powerful place is in the present and being loving and kind to yourself requires you to be at a new level of psychic awareness and personal development, she says. The reason why so many people are getting very in tune and intuitive and are asking difficult questions and working on themselves right now is because that's what needs to happen in order to understand that emotions are not here to harm you, they're here to free you. And they support your change process. They support the freedom to change. And it's happening, it's inevitable all the time. You are evolving and changing. You just don't always recognize that and you don't consciously participate in the process. And she's saying, consciously participate in the process of change. Constantly show up for your own change. If you notice, she says, if your emotions are getting hot, uncomfortable, hot, um, like literally you guys, I am like so sweating right now as I'm talking to you. It's already, it's hot in here, but I'm like, I think it's the energy. <laughs> like change, I need change now, no. <laughs> But then at the same time, it's like, slow your roll, slow your roll. So be aware, be present. Consciously, I literally feel dizzy all of a sudden. Oh my goodness. Constantly participate in your own change process. Show up for it. And she says, don't wait until it's, things are flooding over, your, everything's overflowing and just making a freaking mess. Don't wait. Don't wait and then try to sort things out. And she's like, lean in. She's like, just step right in, <laughs> she says, and let the emotions be there. And don't tie them to one thing. Don't expect the emotion to fix something or give you some magical answer. It's just there to flow, give you information, and let you practice being free and allowing yourself not to attach to that one emotion or that one part, because when you attach, then you go into the judgment, your mind steps in and starts to judge you, to try to put things together, to make sense, to make a plan, or to say how stupid these things are, so you need to stop feeling. Because that's what the mind's doing to try to protect you from what? Future pain. It's future pain, okay? So let's be present with Louise Hay. That, that's like profound, I'm like, whoa. Her energy is usually like really kind of chill and mellow. And then maybe that's why I feel like literally this dizzy, almost like, whoa, lots of crown chakra. Do you guys feel that? Lots of crown chakra work, purple crown chakra work. Let's just take a few minutes to let that energy seep into your brain, clear out some of your cobwebs in your mind, recognizing some of your thought processes that do not allow the emotional freedom that you need. Emotional freedom, by the way, doesn't mean venting to other people and letting them have it or telling them what you think because nobody needs to know what you think necessarily, but how you feel, honoring your feelings in a relationship or in a situation or circumstance could go miles in freeing you so that you can see the, 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 the pebbles on the path, the little stepping stones for their change processes, right? For making your relationships better, for giving you more better opportunities at work, to delegate, to share, to have life be less stressful and not as intense and really supported. Like there's opportunity here. This is not all. Emotions aren't gonna come through and be all awfully intense all the time. At first they probably will be if you've been holding them back for a long time. Understand that when emotions come out, they're not usually face value either. So anger is really oftentimes connected to grief, a fear of loss, fear in general, or sadness. I get mad instead of getting sad because it's easier, it feels more powerful. And so the truth is under my anger, oftentimes it's disappointment, sadness, sometimes regret, sometimes it's kind of being hard on myself energy. And so 
giving yourself the opportunity to be present with the emotions, I think is important. And it's not to feel all the bad stuff. It's to also be present with the good stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I feel creative and great. Even though I'm, maybe I have a friend that's dealing with some really heavy stuff, which I do right now with a parent, like end of life kind of stuff, which is really sad. And I'm in there with her, I'm feeling her. Doesn't mean that I can't have moments of happiness and creativity and excitement and prosperity and abundance and fun and humor and neither and she can too like we can talk and still laugh about something crack a joke you know make a funny um share a memory think something hopeful about the future and talk about hey remember remember when we went on this last trip wouldn't it be great if when we go to paisley park again and have fun and the after you know after party the dance party stuff and you know that kind of thing like all of it belongs here because you belong here so that's the vibes i'm getting from miss louise hey from the afterlife always a pleasure Always informative. I can't wait to listen to this. There's another thing that comes in, and that's courage. Yeah, that's courage. And my ears are itching. What is up with this itchy ear? Okay, I don't know. I'll figure that out. <laughs> Maybe I need to listen more. Maybe I need to pay attention. Maybe my ears are sunburned. It might very well be. <laughs> I have sensitive skin. Even when it's the fall, I still need to use sunscreen. And I'm going to need to practice that sunscreen, sunscreen especially if I'm living in a warmer climate all year long, at some point on my journey, right? Change undertones of change, you know? It's not about the end result, the outcome, the now, now, now! It's about acknowledging you're in the process and feeling the hopeful, positive energy of the process as much as you're feeling the clearing and the depth and the shadow side of it. It's a wholeness. You are whole. Just because you feel bad doesn't mean you're a bad person, okay? It means you're in a place. Honor yourself, love yourself, lean in, cuddle up, and recognize it as it's a changing, ever-changing process. So you're not gonna feel bad forever. It might sometimes feel like that, but it gets better. And there's different times of the day that you do feel better, even if you're dealing with heavy stuff, okay? So, okay, you guys, thanks for watching Above Life Channel. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with hope. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe. Never miss a weekly channeling video. They come out on Mondays, by the way. If you don't get a notice, come here on Mondays, you'll see it. There's also a Facebook page for Above Life channel that I post every week when this video comes out. Sunday Morning Coffee is a podcast I offer. It's an audio podcast. It's also here on Sunday. So Sunday and Monday are the active days here at Above Life channel. Don't forget to be here. All right. So if we've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope, good, check, check. Now what's next? Well, what's next is for you to live your life. This is your life after all. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.